It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 24. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gunn joined in the booth by Charles Davis. That's CD. These Falcons seem to be in an interesting spot coming into 2023. They've seemingly got playmakers galore on offense, but they may only be as good as what their defense can do for them. And that defense? 27th overall in the league last year, so they must improve. In order to help them, though, they're going to try and control the ball more on the offensive side, try and run it a little bit more, take some time off the clock. And meanwhile, for the Colts, it's been a pretty hard fall the last couple of years. From 11 wins in 2020 to just four a season ago, how do they get back on the right path? I think they've started back on the right path with a change in the coaching staff, but a lot of it, players already on the roster playing back to the levels we've seen before. Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And we are underway from Atlanta. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Falcons offense set to take over for the first time, and it's all behind their 30-year-old quarterback. That's Taylor Heineke. Let's face it, you don't see too many Old Dominion alums suiting up under center in the NFL, and in fact, Taylor Heineke, the first ODU quarterback to suit up for a regular season game, not to mention doing well in the playoffs. This guy's an absolute fighter. Fought for every chance he's had in this league, attitude, determination, those carry over to his teammates very well. Throwing to start out is Heineke. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. Yeah, he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. And on this first drive, looks like they want to get that vertical passing game going early. And they did, and what a warning shot they just fired. If you're not going to back up and play coverage deep, we're going to attack you all game long. And once you adjust to that and you start to back off, then that opens things up underneath. A really nice start for them. Great way to get the game going. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Robinson with another carry, and they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back, not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. And they'll try to throw now, Heineke. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 35, here's second down and three. 
On the give, here's Robinson. They find some open field here. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. B. John Robinson, 35 yards. And the Falcons get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. A nice run by him, don't get me wrong, but the blocking up front was a thing of beauty. I think for an opening drive, how about that for an exclamation point? Just what you said, good blocking, good vision, and he accelerated to the end zone. The try here for the extra point. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a 7 to nothing lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Colts offense set to go to work, and they're led by a guy who's bounced around a bit the last few years, hoping to find a home with Indianapolis, Gardner Minshew. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. Now Minshew and the Colts gonna come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be third down. Shoe. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Throwing on first down is Minshew. This one completes Alec Pierce. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 more yards there and another first down. And this is exactly the kind of drive you're hoping for out of the gates. They're mixing the run and the pass well, keeping this defense off balance early. And they're on the march here with another first down. First and 10, Taylor now. Shedding the tackle. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. 
And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block... And he takes this one in for the Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor, 14 yards. And the Colts are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. And there's an offense that didn't panic after getting down early, and with good reason. No better way to silence a home crowd than with a nice, long, sustained drive. And they were able to put one together here and finish with the touchdown run. Matt Gay on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. For this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now Heineke. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that way. And a play fake, and now Heineke. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay inbounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. 58 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hold it into him. So nothing doing there at its second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly.
And they go play action. Now Heineke. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Heineke. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. Uh, partner, you know what I'm going to say before I even say it. Yeah, you just cannot take a sack in that spot. You're exactly right. You can't take a sack in that spot. Potentially now, a three-point swing right there. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And in this first quarter of play, this will remain a tie ball game. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. They'll go play action here with Minshew. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Got a man complete, it's Taylor. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Minshew, first and 10. Now he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time, but it'll be second down. Minshew sets to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that, but if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. Touchdown, Colts! Michael Pittman, 39 yards. And the Colts have taken the lead. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who are in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. Gay is on for the point after. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was capped off on the touchdown catch by Michael Pittman.
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Atlanta now coming out on the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. From the gun, Heineke. And his throw here is incomplete. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To throw is Heineke. And that will be incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. A deep to return is Josh Downs. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Alec Pierce, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He's got his target, that's complete. And he is gonna have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Now Minshew on first and 10. And his throw is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. Off play action, it's Minshew. And that is incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. Here's Minshew. Complete. 
to punt on fourth down. Here's Rigoberto Sanchez. They'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And down he goes just beyond the 35. And that pretty move got him some extra space to run. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Second and five. Now Heineke. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Janu Smith. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they've got it with a first and 10. Throwing, Heineke. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Juju Brents. Now inside the 25. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it, because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Heineke to throw it. That's brought in downfield by London. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Well, 
Play action now. Here's Heineke. His throw incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Heineke now from the 50. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, it looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. On third down, Heineke. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Samson Abukum. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Call it an even 40-yard punt, 7-0 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw going to be caught left side here by Granson. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. is the target incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be Falcon football. B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 80 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Go, go, go. 
Back to Robinson now on first down. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Now a second and two. Again, it's Robinson. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Option play, here's Robinson. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. And they'll try to throw now, Heineke. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here's a second and five. Robinson up the middle. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. On second and goal, here's the option. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Taylor Heineke. A three-yard run as he kept it himself. And the Falcons have cut it back within a score. And maybe there, that was just a case of completely overlooking the guy holding the football. It certainly felt like it, didn't it? Because on my checklist, okay, as a defender, <laughs> QB's last. Running back, fullback, heck, jet sweeps nowadays. Before you even get to thinking about the quarterback might actually keep it. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And they're back with it, a touchdown at 21-14. with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Pushing his way through. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. For the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 right at the 30. Back to throw. And this is incomplete. 
Yes, sir. How about an attaboy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. He was looking for Michael Pittman that time. And that'll bring up second down. They'll go play action here with Minshew. That is caught. Michael Pittman with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Minshew, first and ten. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know, there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now Minshew. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of momentum. The other side is starting to gain. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Throw out right, pulled in by Downs. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you've set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? They'll start this drive out on the ground. Breaks a tackle, now an alley. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. Julian Blackman bringing him down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, another shot for Robinson. Skirts by at the 15. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. 129 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. He used to work relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Off the play fake, Heineke. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quitty Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. To throw is Heineke. Short throw caught by Pitts. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Well, every now and then I can speak from experience because I do know as a defender, it is awfully hard to stay with your man on these crossing routes because even if you don't get picked, there's a danger of being picked either by one of their receivers or maybe by your own defender. And on that play, that worked quite well. Now a run on first down is not going to get off the ground as they will get him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. 
Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Robinson gets the toss on the right side. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Hand off now to Robinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. It's caught. Michael Pruitt. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Heineke trying to get him up to the line quickly. From just shy of midfield, Heineke. It's caught, Smith. And they'll get him to the ground, and he has another first down at the Colts 34-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time, and a fresh set of downs. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. This pass is caught by London. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Heineke. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now, I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes the together. Play. The ruling on the field is reversed. Coup for the extra point. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. into a good one here 21 all the score as the kicks away and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line and the Colts about to go on offense one final time in this first half and with time quickly fading here in the second quarter not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. Minshew sets to throw. 
Quick slant caught by Pierce. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Minshew. Out of his hands quickly to Pittman. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw it, Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Here now, second and four. It'll be Minshew again. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. throw now on the final play he's going to take a shot at the end zone why not and he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete so we've reached halftime in a wild first half we'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to orlando where jonathan coachman has our ea sports halftime report coach okay brandon thanks very much back to you guys in a bit but first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 56 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender, and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go. Sometimes a thing of beauty. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. 
So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll drop to throw. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They start on the ground with Robinson here. Shrugs him off. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. Right back to him on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. Following the penalty, it's first and five, and you got to think offensively, all kinds of options. They'll run it now with Robinson. And this will be a Falcons first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. First and ten, it's Robinson. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's going to be a gain of six on the keeper, but it leads to a third down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On third down, Robinson. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 45-yard line. A nice pickup there, 18 yards, first down Falcons. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. Here's Heineke. Into the hands of London. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll run this one right with Robinson. 
And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Second and a couple. A shotgun handoff to Patterson. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. B. John Robinson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons have broken our tie. Well, fair to say they've got something here in this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time in the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot. But he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. Kuh able to connect on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. the touchdown now it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 and now Indianapolis set to take the field Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 22. He'll start with a give to Taylor. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Again, it's Taylor. And shedding the tackle, and now some room. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards on the pickup there, and a first. They finally caught up to him there at the end of the play, but great inside handoff, and what a powerful run. The first few yards seemed relatively easy. Then it got tougher, right? And that's where he showed that he was not going to go down easily. He was not going to be denied until he got everything he could out of that run. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was, because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping at air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. Over the middle complete, it's Taylor. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Off play action, it's Minshew. Out to his left. And he will slide to a stop 
He does have the first down. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. It certainly appears that he's been able to get a read on how they've wanted to contain him in this game. He's seen some places where he can beat them in big spots, and right there, he slides in with ease for the first down. First and 10, Taylor now. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Here's a second and eight. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Now Minshew on first and ten. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game. But after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Out of the gun is Minshew. the 20 before he's brought down. Good work by Minshew there to pick up the first. But nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD. Got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now a second and six. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. So after the second down in completion, they'll come up now against a third and six. He'll look to throw. Looking for Pearson, he's got him. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Alec Pierce. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts have a chance to tie the ball game here in the final minute of the third. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that went good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And we are all tied at 28. So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. 
B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. So a six-carry drive, the last go-around touchdown on the end of it. We'll see if they can duplicate that here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep a ball in the booth just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it is it heavy? Is it that heavy? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light, right? So keep <laughs> giving it to him and let him do his work. It's not going to slow him down. If it's light for me, it's definitely light for him. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Second down, Heineke. And that one knocked away and incomplete. Nice job defensively on what will be the final play of the third quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. The Falcons on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. From the gun, Heineke. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Atlanta. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. Taylor to begin the drive and he goes across the 20 to the 22 five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players isn't it tough hard gritty run got behind his pads bowled over a few people look at that one right up the gut saw it through three quarters no reason to lighten up now second down another run with Taylor and he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And not only will he not get the few inches he needs, he's going to go backwards. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And taken right at the 35. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. He is north of 200 yards. Any time that you can say you're north of 200 yards, you've done something right. Yeah, you're going to get some big check marks on your grade sheet. And you're going to be in heavy rotation on all the highlight shows. And you might even make a magazine cover or two. <laughs> He's hoping for more. The cherry on top, maybe, as this game goes forward. 
A first down throw for Heineke. Going right side here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 18 yards the game for number 18. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Robinson, he'll try the left side. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Now second and five. Again, it's Robinson. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Third and short yardage, Heineke. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Falcon passing game looking good on this drive as they get the first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Robinson up the middle. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after oh, no, he lost the football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Out, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Well, the fumble recovery certainly has put them in the driver's seat. First and ten, all tied here in the fourth. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. On the give, here's Robinson. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. Certainly some pressure here on young Wei Koo. This to break our fourth quarter tie. Koo knocks this one through the post. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, 
And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked up by Richie Grant. And the Falcons are gonna take over at their own 41. Part, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Well, the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Throwing, Heineke. Short throw caught by Pitts. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. The offense on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is going to be third and 13. Looking to throw, Heineke. certainly appeared to take away his first read and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target the coverage was too good that one falls incomplete here's Bradley Pena now as he's on to punt for Atlanta and a great job here this is going to turn out to be a beauty this is marked down at about the three yard line Colts football and Michael Pittman helmet back on and ready to go and I know that they double teamed him a couple times but not a ton whatever they're doing isn't working he's up over 100 yards we'll see how they adjust and when they do that they weaken their defense in other places as well and how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this but it's usually not by himself is it right. usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well A carry by Taylor to start the drive. 
And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. A.J. Terrell coming up to make the play. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now Minshew. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. Now the two points, that's not totally critical at this point. Still a one-score game, but they do have to give away the football with no guarantees they're going to get it back. Yeah, or at least if they get it back, will they have any time to do anything with it? So they've got to send their defense out there and say, guys, we got to have it right now. Save some time for us. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Fielded at about the 28. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it? Consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first down, and the goal in the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. And they run the option on second down. No bottled up fumble. It's out, it's loose, and the Colts pick it up. Touchdown, Indianapolis. And a big turning point here in the second half, Charles, after that play. All you're trying to do is change momentum, flip things around for your team. You're just trying to take the ball away. But how about when you take it away and score? That really changes things. So here we go. The Colts will go for two. And Minshew will throw for it. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So that effort gives them a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Thanks to their defense for getting him two points closer. Now the question, what can this unit come up with offensively as they begin here following the free kick? Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Juju Prince. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. 
Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Off the option, here's Taylor. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Second down, another run with Taylor. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Minshew sets to throw. Touchdown! Alec Pierce, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts will add to their fourth quarter lead. What a huge touchdown that was, obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And, Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, they'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few snaps remaining. They can't relax just yet. Gay is on for the point after. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown catch from Alec Pierce. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So Heineke and the Falcons down by 10, a minute 54 on the clock. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery, but first things first, first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play.
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Let's go to field. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Here's Minshew. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. Second and 11 now. They give to Taylor out of the gun. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.